My name is Skip Shiel. I would like to discuss three of the primary reasons why I work in Palestine and Israel. My history in the region goes back to 2003. I'll say a little bit more about that. In a previous video, I spoke about what I do, the kind of photography I'm working on now, represented by photographs in the back here, the Nakba project. But in this short talk, hopefully under six minutes, I'll, be, I'll try to describe three basic reasons why I go. Number one, Jesus Christ. Number two, outrage. And number three, Mediterranean light. I was raised Catholic in Chicago. On the wall, as I recall, and this I think from my age of seven or eight or nine, in the 40s, 1940s, I saw these images of him and noticed the land and wondered, I'm sure somewhere in there, in my psyche at that moment, I wondered what that land was like. If I were to go there, even though it's 2,000 years after he lived there, I would maybe have some sense of what that land was like. The deserts, the mountains, um, the Mediterranean Sea, the Sea of Galilee, um, Capernaum, where he taught. I would have an opportunity to actually be on the ground near or at sites of his teaching. If the story is to be believed, did he live? Not sure. I think so. I have never fully accepted the supernatural parts of his story, resurrection, immaculate conception, but I, he is one of my primary teachers, Jesus Christ and Buddha. So Jesus is one reason I go there. The second, outrage. My outrage at what I came to understand in the late 1980s, early 1990s, about what the Israelis were doing, the Zionist Israelis, by the way, to the Palestinians. The occupation of the West Bank, and later, much later, the siege of Gaza. So this outrage, was it inflamed me. It became explosive. I felt I would become a danger to myself and other people if I didn't do something. But what could I do? Well, photography. That's my tool. That's my trade. That's my mission. It's my calling. And so I thought, well, I'll go there as a photographer. I can't just photograph a tele television set. But I was fearful. I was scared. This was 2003, three years into the Second Intifada, a fairly violent time. And I thought about going alone, but no, I'll find a delegation. And I did finally, the Fellowship of Reconciliation. And about 20 of us, including one of my best friends, Stan Edelson, went there for two weeks, October, November, into the olive harvest season of 2003. And my second fear was, can I do a good job photographically? All right, I'm there. I can probably survive this. But what about my photographs? Will they be of any value? So the outrage, I was able to turn into something a little bit more productive. And I continue with the photography. But I still feel the outrage. Number three, a real surprise to a lot of people, Mediterranean light. I had heard about Mediterranean light. I knew something about it. It's maybe very bright, at the same time diffused. Um, it's what people would experience in countries like Greece, Italy, um, Egypt, countries that surround the Mediterranean Sea. I hadn't realized this was one of the driving forces. In fact, it wasn't. I never thought about Mediterranean, Mediterranean light in the context of Israel-Palestine. But once I got there, I couldn't escape it. October, November, beautiful light. Um, the beginning of, almost the beginning of the rainy season. So dry, very few clouds, direct light from the sun, bounced off sand or limestone, diffused and sharp. So, as a photographer, I have to uh, deal with that. And this is continually a, continue cha a continuous challenge. So every time I go back, I hope to do the photograph with the Mediterranean light 
a little bit better. And then underlying all this is probably some deeper reason that I've not been able to specify. I firmly believe that when we explore our motivations, we come up with some superficial reasons, which I've just given you. They're, you know, they're more than superficial. And then underlying deep, deep, deep reasons. One cue or clue, family history of Judaism. There's some thought that way back somewhere in our family is Jewish. We don't know. Secondly, compassion, which I learned from my mom, I think, and I try to develop it. Compassion for people who suffer, whether they be Israeli, Jewish, Israeli, Palestinian, Palestinian West Bank, Palestinian Gaza, they're all suffering in various ways. And I have some compassion for that. That draws me and keeps me going. I think that's one of the underlying reasons. And finally, the quest for justice, fairness, equality. People can't continue to live that way without others of us activating and doing something about it. So that's my story. I hope it makes some sense.